and then we'll move on to the next thing. So on your packet, from why chicken means so much to me, you have this handout. It said, after you have completed the inference chart, answer the short answer question below using eight, answering three to five complete sentences. So, like I said earlier, you guys will have a CBA test this week, and some of the CBA questions are going to be short answer response. For those questions, you're going to have to answer an eight, because remember, a big part of you getting those questions right is being able to explain why your answer is correct, right? Because there's no set answer. There's no like multiple choice, it's one answer and that's it. There's, there can be a variety of answers, but you have to make sure you can make that connection so you can get it right. Um, so we're gonna be using eight. Answer, prove, explain. Answer the question, prove your answer with text evidence, explain the connection between your answer and the evidence. So here was the question from why chicken means so much to me. What can the reader infer about Junior's outlook on his life at the end of the story? So I'm gonna go to the end of the story, and I'm gonna quickly read it. It says, so poor, and I'm reading on page 13, so the second to the last page, when he's taking Oscar to the tree. It says, so poor and small and weak, I picked up Oscar. He licked my face because he loved and trusted me, and I carried him out to the lawn and I laid him down beneath our green apple tree. I love you, Oscar, I said. He looked at me and I swear to you that he understood what was happening. He knew what dad was going to do, but Oscar wasn't scared, he was relieved. But not me, I ran away from there as fast as I could. I wanted to run faster than the speed of sound. I'm at the very last page. But nobody, no matter how much pain there is, can run that fast. So I heard the boom of my father's rifle when he shot my best friend. A bullet only cost about two cents, and anybody can afford that. How do you think Junior's outlook on his life, the way he, he feels about his life and his future, what do you think it, it is? What do you think he feels? What do you think he thinks? He don't like it. He doesn't like it? Why not? Yeah, so his dad had to put down the dog. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, was it or not? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I didn't know I was, I was like making out what, what you were saying, right? Um, so yeah, dad had to put down the dog. But why? Why is all this happening? Why, why did dad have to put down the dog? What's the main problem here? The dog is sick. Well, the dog is sick, yes, but... They got no money. They don't have any money, right? They're poor. Um, so how did, he says a bullet only costs two cents and anybody can afford that. How does he feel about, so this is their solution, right? Because that's the cheapest thing that they can do, right? Two cents. How does he feel about his life in the future? Do, do you think that he feels like there's there's something different waiting to happen to him or there's going, like it's going to get better? No, right? I think he's accepted the fact that this is my life, right? So I'm gonna put for my answer on my outline section, um, Junior feels sad that, and Junior feels sad and believes um, being in poverty is a situation that will not change. So I think he feels like this is it, this is my life. Like the cheapest thing we could do is use a bullet to put our dog out of misery. This is what we're dealt with.
Now, for prove, I need to prove my answer with text evidence. So I need to go and find text evidence that supports this. So I like the line, um, where is it here? I like the line on page 13, and I say page 13 at the bottom, you'll see page numbers. Um, but on page 13, Towards the middle of the page, it says, but we reservation Indians don't get to realize our dreams. We don't get those chances or choices. We're just poor. That's all we are. Now, that's if he's talking about his mom and dad's, like, what they would have been if, if they had the chance. And to me, that shows, like, we don't, we just, we're stuck in this situation. Yes, mom's very smart and dad's very talented. It doesn't matter. We're poor and that's all we're gonna, like we can't do anything about it. So to me, that proves my answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that line here. So I'm gonna put, but we, Reservation Indians, don't get to realize Now I'm going to explain how this proves my answer. So I'm going to go ahead and put, so let me think. Um, trying to word it. I'm just thinking in my head. acknowledges that although his parents had the skills to be successful, you know what, I don't like acknowledges, accept. They stayed poor. He believed the same about his life. will change his life. Nothing he does will change his situation. So 
there's my explanation. It's a little messy. the story. So notice here, I wrote my text evidence, but I didn't write in the story. But now that I'm making it a paragraph, I'm going to add those transitions and those um, introductory phrases. So in the story, Junior says, and now I'm going to add my quote, but we reservation Indian get to realize our dreams. And then I'm actually just going to stick to we're just poor right after that. We're just poor. With this line, or with this quote, If you notice, I'm kind of rewording what I wrote here in the explanation. Is that the same thing? I'm just rewording it because as you start writing your paragraph, you may realize that you want to say it differently or it makes sense to put a different word. They could not escape poverty. He feels the same has happened to him. situation will not change. So there's my body paragraph, or my paragraph. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see better if you need me to zoom in. There it is. So Junior feels sad and believes that being in poverty is not something that will ever change. In the story, Junior says, but we reservation Indians don't get to realize our dreams. We're just poor. With this quote, it is clear that Junior thinks that although his parents are talented, they could not escape poverty. He feels the same has happened to him and his situation will not change. 
That's my paragraph. I did my outline. When you do your outline, your outline should not be just copying and pasted into your paragraph. You're gonna have to add a few things here and there. Or you may completely change the way you're wording things, still saying the same thing, but just change the way it's worded because you realize, you know what, it tells better this way. Um, that's kind of what I did here. Now, when you write your short answer response, you're not gonna have this outline, but to make sure that you have the eight, all the eight components of answer, proof, evidence, one thing that I tell students is to label it. So once you write your paragraph, your answer, you might say, all right, well, this is my answer right here. So you might make a little A, um, and then you, you identify your text evidence, all right, here's my P, and then here I explain how my proof shows my answer, so I'm gonna label this E. And so you don't have an outline, but at least now you know I've got all three parts, A, P, E. Yes? You label it in your answer if you need to. Does that make sense? When you guys are ready, we're gonna go into um, our next thing. Our next thing. All right, so again, it is in week seven. Um, now, the packet for white chicken means so much to me. It is for a grade. Um, if it's done, you can turn it in now. If not, you can bring it to me on Wednesday. But on Wednesday, I'm picking it up. Or it's gonna be missing in the grade book, okay? But if it's done, you can turn it into, into me right now. Does anybody have it finished? No, the white chicken means so much to me packet. So the packet that was with this. It had like characterization, it had the blue paper, it had the inferencing paper. It was due today. Is it done? No? Okay, so bring it to me on Wednesday because I'm gonna put it in the grade book. All right, so the next thing that we're doing is that CBA review that I just popped out. So here are the directions. On your packet or in Schoology Week 7, um, you're going to go through a couple of slides. And every slide is going to explain some grammar rules. And then the next slide, so, let's, so you'll have like a slide that goes over capitalization. And then the next slide, you'll have activities for capitalization. So let me show you. So for example, the first slide we have here is capitalization. So everybody go to the slide that says capitalization. Um, it's behind the first page. So we're gonna do the first couple of practices together and then I'll let you do it on your own. So you have the grammar rules or the capitalization rules. So it says capital letters are like red flags because they draw attention to important words Listed below are some of the basic rules for using capitals along with some examples. So the rules for capitalization, and let me backtrack real quick guys. 
everything that you see in this review, you're going to see on your CBA test. So when you're going through this activity, make sure that you read the grammar rules because they're there to help you understand them so that when you see them on your test, you don't get them wrong, right? That way you learn them and you, uh, or maybe you already know them, you just need a refresher. All right, so rules for capitalization. Rule number one, capitalize the first word of a sentence. Example, the students attended school early in the morning. The is the first uh, word in the sentence, you capitalize it. Easy peasy, we know that, right? Yes? Rule number two, capitalize the name of a specific person, place, or thing, but not general ones. For example, my high school, Lehman High School, was one of the three high schools in the district. Lehman High School is capu ca capitalized, but not high school over here and not high school over here. Why not? It's not a specific name. Here, it is part of the name, right? Lehman High School, but not over here. These are just general high schools, right? I really want to visit New York City. It is the only city left on my list. Same thing as Lehman High School. Um, city is part of the name here, so it's capitalized. But typically, we don't capitalize the word city, right? I am visiting Grandpa Joe tomorrow morning. Grandpa Joe is a name. You're calling Grandpa, Grandpa Joe. So it's capitalized. But if you say, all grandpas like to say jokes. You're just talking about grandpas in general. You don't capitalize that. Okay? I love watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade on Thanksgiving. Name of the event, Macy's Thanksgiving Parade. Now, you capitalize names of months, days of the week, and special days, like Thanksgiving, but not seasons. So I love seeing my family during Thanksgiving, capitalize Thanksgiving. It is my favorite time in the fall. You do not capitalize fall, winter, spring, summer. Those are not capitalized. One of my favorite things about spring are the blossoming flowers and Easter. Capitalize Easter. So we go through the grammar rules. And then on the next slide, you have a practice activity. Underline the words that should be capitalized in the sentences. You have five sentences. You'll underline what should be capitalized in each. So I'm going to give you four minutes to go through the five sentences, underline what should be capitalized, and then we'll go over it together. Yes? Four minutes.
Mr. Morden isn't boring. That hardly matters. You can't leave though. So be aware of those double negatives because I hear it all the time. And if I'm telling you it's on here, it's going to be where? Test. On your test, right? So make sure that you're aware of the double negatives. Make sure that you're aware of the negatives that are not so obvious, right? Um, and you're careful with when you talk that you don't say double negatives because then you're saying the opposite, right? All right, so you can go back to the compound predicate and you can start doing, um, you can start doing the activities. And then you just keep going, guys. You got a slide with rules and then a slide for practice. That's what we're doing today, okay? Any questions? All right, you guys get to it.